What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple surprised everybody with the release of the iOS 13.7 beta. And if you're confused, I will explain it here in a moment. But yes, this update comes about a week after iOS 13.6.1 which was released to the general public. And I think that this update gives us a little hint that iOS 14 may not be as close to being released as we think. So we'll talk about that here in a moment. But anyways, taking a look at the size of this update, you can see here 4.21 gigabytes. And this was actually only released to registered developers. So you do need a beta profile, the iOS 13 beta profile, to see iOS 13.7 populate on your device. So an extremely strange move, and I don't think I've ever seen this in iOS history, where we're on an iOS 14 beta, iOS 14 beta 6, and then we backtrack almost and go back to a beta on iOS 13 with 13.7 here. Now, granted, this is likely a GM release, so this is likely a GM beta, hence the size of the update. I mean, that is also because we're going from a public release back to a beta, but still, let's take a look at the build numbers. You guys can see a better understanding of what I mean. So if you go to settings general about 13.7, you can see the build number there. It's also indicative of a GM build or a final build number. So 17H33. So there's no letter or anything like that, which indicates that this is likely the only beta that we'll be seeing for iOS 13.7. And going down to the modem firmware, that is also unchanged here at 2.07.00. So if you were having any type of issues with connectivity, those are not likely going to be fixed with this update. You'll probably just have to wait for iOS 14. So yes, iOS 13.7 beta, that is what Apple is calling this. And you can see here it says, iOS 13.7 lets you opt into the COVID-19 exposure notification system without the need to download an application. System availability depends on support from your local public health authority. For more information, see covid19.apple.com slash contact tracing. And then it says we do also get other bug fixes for the device in this update. So first off, let's talk about that change, which is pretty much the only change in this update, at least the biggest one, the COVID-19 exposure notification system, and now how you don't have to have an application to opt in. So if you go into our settings here and then go down to exposure notifications right here, you will see we have a new page here that actually lets you turn on exposure notifications just like you can with iOS 14. So in iOS 13.6, 13.6.1, and previous versions of iOS 13, you were not able to turn on exposure notifications unless you had an application from your local government installed already. But now you don't necessarily need an application to be installed. So if you go ahead and go to turn on, you can see here we get this little walkthrough, a really nice presentation here telling us exactly what's going on with the exposure notifications and how to you know set it up. So it says your iPhone can tell you if you may have been exposed to COVID-19. Let's go ahead and click on continue. Then we will have to select our region. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the United States. I'm gonna select my state of Florida. And then you can see there it says exposure notifications are not currently available. Exposure notifications have not been turned on for your region by your public health authority. And then if we click done, you can see here it goes back to this page. So at least we now get the option to turn them on even though in my you know, local state here, Florida, I'm not able to turn them on because I don't have an application. You still will be able to turn it on in select states and select regions as well. So it's kind of confusing. I know this whole thing with Apple and Google, this whole partnership where they brought this out has been really cool, but it's been very confusing for a lot of people in terms of you know, how it works and actually getting it up and running on your iPhone. So I will talk more about this and go a little bit more in depth when the final release of iOS 13.7 gets released, because I will hopefully see if I can download some applications for Florida and then possibly show you guys more about this menu system right here. But we do also have the availability alerts down here, which you can toggle on and off if you do have exposure notifications turned on. But right now mine is grayed out. And actually that's because of location services being turned off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that on really quick so you guys can see that. So I guess I need location-based alerts turned on I'm not really sure what's not turned on so let's go back in here and yeah so that's what I needed to have enabled inside of settings to activate the availability alerts so this will notify me when an application becomes available for my state and if you want to know exactly how exposure notifications work you can click on this little button right here and it will give you a brief explanation of how they work here on the iPhone with the exposure notifications inside of settings now as far as anything else changed in iOS 13.7 I've not noticed anything else yet and I've also not noticed any bug fixes. There were a couple of bugs in iOS 13.6 and 13.6.1. So I will be testing those throughout the week to see if they are fixed, but it appears that the keyboard bug, the keyboard lag bug has been solved. I've not seen any issues with that so far. 
And there were a few other issues as well that I'm going to have to wait and see if they've been resolved. So I will talk about those in my final release of iOS 13.7 videos. So when it gets released to the public, I will talk about that more in depth because it's likely going to be the exact same build. Again, this is likely the GM build of 13.7, which means that next week we could possibly see 13.7 be released to the public, to everybody. Now we also still have the VPN bug. So this was present in iOS 13.6 and 13.6.1. So I doubt that it's patched in 13.7. And of course, if you guys don't know about this, I talk about it in pretty much every iOS video now, but it was presented by Proton VPN. They were the ones who pointed this out. I will leave a link down in the description below if you wanna read about it. Basically, it's where VPN, the VPN doesn't always work. So the tunnel kind of leaks out data sometimes and not everything goes through the VPN tunnel as it should. So that's been a vulnerability for a while now and Apple has still not addressed that. So don't expect that to be fixed in 13.7 either. Now, as far as performance goes, performance feels exactly the same as iOS 13.6 and 13.6.1 to me. I really don't see any difference at all in just the raw performance. I've played games, I've gone in and out of applications and the app switcher, and I really haven't noticed anything different. Now, I did also run a Geekbench score here or a Geekbench test, and you can see the scores here. 13.6.1 was on August 12th. We got an 11.17. And then on 13.7, we got slightly lower at 11.07, but the multi-core is higher. So it's been continuing to get higher ever since 13.6, which is here on July 9th. You can see we have a 28.55 versus a 28.74 now on 13.7. And you can see the gradual improvement since 13.6 here on July 9th. Of course, the single core is a little bit down but that could just be an anomaly. And of course, these scores don't always tell the full story. So if there's any change in performance, I will let you guys know in my upcoming video when the final version of 13.7 gets released. And it's the same deal with the battery life as well. Battery life, I would expect to be exactly the same as it was on 13.6 and 13.6.1. 13.6 did fix a lot of the battery drain issues for some people. And for those that it didn't fix, their battery drain issues got fixed in 13.6.1. So that is good news, and I'm pretty sure that Apple did not mess with anything related to battery at all in 13.7. So I would not expect anything in terms of battery life improvements or in terms of you know new battery issues, hopefully. But again, if anything changes, I will let you guys know in my upcoming 13.7 video when it gets released to the public. And if we take a look at the calendar, we should see iOS 13.7 be released next week on the 2nd, so possibly on September 2nd or maybe later on in the week. We really don't know with Apple, they always throw curveballs our way. We really don't know what to expect anymore, but it could come as early as next week on September 2nd there. Now, as far as 13.7.1, a lot of people thought that 13.6.1 would be the last iOS 13 release, but of course that's not the case as we can tell now. And 13.7.1 may actually come out as well as early as possibly, you know, it could possibly come in September, but it could also come in October. So it all depends on when we get iOS 14, I think, which this release, by the way, pretty much confirms that we're not gonna be seeing iOS 14 in September. So we'll probably be seeing iOS 14 in October if I had to guess. So if that's the case, if we get iOS 14 in October with the iPhone event, so when Apple announces the iPhone 12, if they release iOS 14 that same day, which is a very good likelihood, then we may actually see a 13.7.1 near the end of September, kind of just a last release, just to make sure everything is stable on iOS 13 before going to iOS 14. Now, since every device on iOS 13 is supported by iOS 14, I don't think that we're gonna see any iOS 13 releases after iOS 14 is released. Now, Apple could pull something crazy and throw a curveball away, and of course, update iOS 13 even after iOS 14 public is out, but I just don't see that happening but again, we will see Apple has done crazy things before, just like today. So we'll have to wait and see on that. I'm kind of done trying to play the guessing game with Apple in terms of, you know, the, the name of the releases. So anyways, we'll see on that. But that's pretty much it for iOS 13.7. Really not much to talk about. Really just the COVID exposure notifications being added without needing an application. And this was likely due to like the government wanting this to be added at a specific time and iOS 14 would not be out by that specific time. So that's probably why Apple pushed this out. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and let me know what you think about iOS 13.7. Also, if you found anything new in this update, let me know down in a comment below. But just a short and sweet video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.